So you can hear go, listen. Very, very heavy seal. This is what van stalls and Z bass reels are known for. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today, we'll be getting up close and personal with the latest from Rob K's brain, the Visser number no. 8. This, my friends, is a spinning reel that is designed to go up against your Van Stahl, VSX, the VR, the Salt X, and Z Bass reels. It's not cheap, it comes in between six and seven hundred bucks, respectively. And uh, yeah, it's designed to be a destroyer of all worlds super tank spinning reel that can take a submersion can be fished underwater you can put on a wetsuit and swim on out and do some skishing keep this reel submerged spin it underwater it's designed for the harshest of fishing conditions a lot of you guys that fish fresh water when you see me talking about sealed spinning reels you you tend to question what value does it have well when you're surf casting, when you're climbing out on jetties, when you're getting blasted by waves on the tips of those jetties, when you're on the beach, you're taking sandy wash, your reels are going down in the sand, you're tripping and falling, stumbling, bumbling, and having a super rugged reel will save you that trip back to a car trying to get a replacement because your reel locked up or you broke a bail, or you broke something on the reel or jammed up, that kind of stuff. So it's uh, with all that being said, uh, this is a little bit different. Uh, generally speaking, I give you guys an unboxing, uh, initial analysis, and then I go put time on the reel and get back to you and you know report on it. This is a little bit different because I foregoed the initial fondle and show and tell, and I started putting time on this reel already. Put about, eh, I don't know, 40 stripers, 35 fish, something like that. Biggest one, about three foot long, 36, 37 inches long in current. Uh, submerged it, cranked it underwater, fished it underwater, all that kind of good jazz, just to see when I go ahead and tear it down, how it held up. Now, my initial impressions from initial unboxing to initial night on the water to now have changed. Initially, this reel had some issues out of the box, which I hate to see, and I've reported on that on the, the thread on Strivers Online. But it's changed. Certain things seems to have kind of found their way uh, and, and we'll get into that. So one of my biggest issues I had was it was super tight. If you guys fish van stalls or have owned numerous van stalls, you know that some van stalls are tighter than others. This one was really tight to crank, right? Not the end of the world, hoping that it would wear in, and it did. So it, it seemingly loosened up a little bit. It's not like a Saragossa. It's not like a Twin Power or Stella where you, it has a crazy amount of free spin. The heavier and more restrictive seals are going to prevent that. But it's not like it was. This is fine. Like this right now is what I would consider your average used for half a season, quarter a season, van stall after you put fresh seals in it. It's not super, super tight. You're not fighting the handle trying to fish a plug slowly or all the kind of jazz. So that has kind of solved itself. The other issue I found was the handle knob. Not only was it noisy, grindy, and you can literally, when you turn the handle, feel the resonating of the ball bearings on this handle knob throughout the entire frame into this, the, the, the real stem. It also sounded like there were shards of glass in it. So my assumption is during the manufacturing process of either the bearing or how this knob mounts to the stem, there was some metal shavings, and after use, and kind of winching on it and putting pressure on it, that kind of went away. It's still geary and grindy when it comes to the bearing, which you'll see when I hook up the mic to the frame, you can hear it loud and clear. I mean, I can still feel it, but it's not giving me that, that you, you know when you bite down on a scalp and it's got some sand in it and you hear that, like that awful sound, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard, but with sand. That's what it was doing, that's now gone. So that's, that's a plus. Uh, another problem I had when I had this reel right out of the box the drag was completely silent. So <laughs> if you were on the phone with me and I put this right up to the phone, 
and I turned the spool on it, you wouldn't hear it on the other end of the phone. So that's how quiet it was. A couple fish into an evening tide one night, setting the hook, that rapid spool, you know, jerk when you, the drag slips on a hook set. Out of the blue, I was like, oh, look, it, it got a drag now. It was, it, was, it was a pleasant surprise. So that was cool to see. The other thing I found when I first cracked her was removing the drag knob. There was an O-ring just, just sitting loosey-goosey right here. I thought maybe it went up into here. Again, this was 10 seconds into opening it up. Turns out the O-ring is supposed to go on the top portion of the drag stack, which kind of prevents the drag from being pushed through the bottom. Uh, yeah, that wasn't seated properly. That wasn't in place properly, which after securing it and reassembling it, uh, maybe that had something to do with how the, the click eventually started working. But again, I was monkeying around with it for quite a bit of time trying to figure out how and why it wasn't audible because guys on the forums were saying theirs sounds just fine. Mine was as silent as you can possibly make a drag with a click. It, 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 again, you couldn't hear it on the other side of the phone with it held up to the microphone on the phone. So that kind of worked itself out. The O-ring's back in place. Uh, whether it stays there, how many times are you going to be taking this off? When you pull this off, just be, just be wary. If you remember when the pen torque first came out, uh, there were some issues with when you pulled the spool out, the spool pin could get dislodged and you can lose that bit. So it, it just, just like that, you got to pay attention a little bit when you take the spool off. Whether it's an issue for everybody, I don't know. Next up, after some time spent on the reel, it started developing a squeak. My assumption is it's the seal at the pinion above the enter reverse clutch. Uh, it's kind of intermittent. It developed after. <laughs> so I gained a drag sound and I also gained a squeak. So it happened at the same time. I, I don't know what caused it. It, it. To me, it's a dry seal. I don't know. The other thing that sort of worked its way out a little bit, and it still shows up from time to time at, in the dark, in the cold, is the anti-reverse clutch will slip and the rotor would turn back. If you see where the rotor's position, position right here, it would turn back to about here. So a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch of rotor play, which translates, you know, 5.8 to one, blah, 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 to a, a, a decent amount of handle slop. So you, you, would, you would feel it and it would just feel like not a nice thing, I think is the best way to put it. If you like nice things, you know, like freshwater spinning reels from Daiwa and Shimano, if you like that kind of feel where they're rock solid, and hell, even the Chinese ones for 30 bucks that have instant answer reverse clutches, they would feel better than this. So having that, that, that ha handle play made it feel like it was like an old pen. And it was more consistent than not. Now, now that it's warmed up and I'm sitting here on the bench, it's not going to do it as much. You saw maybe a little bit there. You saw it kind of back up, but not much. When it was colder, it's significantly more. So aside from that, which I, I'm kind of going along the lines that these are assembly issues. I hope you guys aren't coming out and saying, oh, this, how they, this is a piece of garbage. I don't think it is. The guys that have this reel that are fishing it that haven't had any issues are loving it. There have been some issues where they assembled the reel without putting the stud that runs the oscillation in and something snapped off. Uh, I've heard of handles snapping off. I've seen some handle knobs where the screw right here is in on an angle. It's cross-threaded. I've seen the same thing up here too. I mean, it's all in the thread and stripers online. Guys have been posting pictures left and right. Uh, I, I don't say left and right, you know, lots of pictures, good, and some issues. And again, 90% of what I'm seeing, I think at least, is all due to assembly, not quality control, meaning the they're putting pieces in with poor tolerances and they're not fit right and they're not machined right. So, so that being said, we're going to go ahead and tear it down. I don't know what this thing looks like on the inside yet. I, I've heard from what I saw the initial prototypes that this is fairly uniquely constructed. It's a very narrow frame, a la the pen torque. But from what I saw early on, we're talking seven, eight months ago, uh, it's nothing along those lines. So it's all being said, we're gonna crack the box to get to the tool that comes supplied with it. Now this is the first time I'm being, uh, we're going through this box thoroughly, so I don't even know what's in here. It comes with a neoprene reel pouch that I will never use. We got some, a postcard probably saying thank you. 
we have their screwdriver. Okay, that's cool. I remember hearing that it came with it. I'm assuming this is the Bayless kit. And is that it? That killed a lot of trees to make this box. That's 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 pretty thick, heavy gauge cardboard. It's pretty heavy. Good presentation. And you know, before we go ahead and get started on this, I want to compare. These two have nearly identical capacities. This is a 14,000 uh, twin power. And this is a 17, 17 and a half ounce reel spooled. This one's up in the 20s, mid 20s. So when it comes to a reel that has significant capacity, you're talking 300 yards of 60 pound braid ish in that range, I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, Saragossa, Stella's, Twin Powers, they're, they're that kind of capacity, you're, you're in the 23 to 25 ounce range. Same thing with Daiwa. So you're getting a pretty, pretty hefty weight savings. All right, so another thing to watch out for. If you guys have owned uh, van stalls in the past, you're familiar with one of the only negatives with the drag nut besides tough to grip sometimes, is when you get it off that detent, it'll, it'll free spin. Just be careful you don't lose your drag knob in the sand. Not the end of the world, just wanted to point that out. And you can see down here, serviceable clicker. Separate spring on that little, looks like something out of Star Wars on a little spaceship looking thing. That's the clicker, runs on these, detents around there. Very straightforward. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open up the screwdriver. Um. Bugger! <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> that sucks. We're gonna have to use a wrench to open up the screwdriver. What the fuck? Grind that. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. Okay. I, th I, I thought there were like three little bits in there. I didn't realize there were so many. All right. So that was an adventure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the rotor first. I think that's the right place to start. Get this out of the way. We'll we'll do a separate video on how to do the bailless install. Okay. What do we have here? Flathead, multiple torques. Is this? Nope. Is this? Yeah. Okay, backed up pretty easy. Hold on, we, we want to have the, the, the entire experience. Yeah. Oh, that's that's Visser luxury. This actually is a pretty nice little aluminum quarter inch bit type little screwdriver. I love this bail design, by the way. I really do. Wow, that looks like a Van Stahl. Let's put the handle back on. Very, very beefy handle shaft. This thing can definitely take a hit. And you can see, that's what appear, are these O-rings? They look like they're, oh yeah, they look like they might actually be O-rings that keep that spool pin centered and from falling out the other side. That's cool. I wonder what this is made out of. Is that aluminum? It has an interesting color of anodization. Oh, and while we're at it, this is that self-adhesive silicone. Um, let's get a little sidetracked, but whatever. Imagine if you had a wiffle ball as a handle. They're somewhat hard edges. They're broken edges, but they're not... I, I hate the knob on this thing. This is one of the worst handle knobs I've ever had on a, on a spinning reel. 
Not a big fan of the Shimano, you know, knobs. I like I like a round knob, but this this is my least favorite handle knob on a spinning reel ever, 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 ever. There's not a single spinning reel I dislike more than the knob on this. And for you guys that have watched the content that I put out, I've had a lot of spinning reels. All right, so we got that ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and pop these. <laughs> what? Oh, it might actually work. That's crazy. That's in a tight. Anybody who works on reels often doesn't have the Knipex pliers wrench. You need to get yourself one. I don't think I've ever had screws that were that tightly embedded in a reel frame. At the same time, I don't think I've ever had screws of this gauge <laughs> to hold a reel frame together. These are Mongo screws. These, these are not your grandma's fasteners. You can see that they have the thread locker. That white powdery residue, there's a little bit of blue in there. Yeah. I'm thinking this might be one. <gasps> Huh. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. What a genius design this is. Am I doing it right? <laughs> is this how it goes? Okay, that's that's cool. I like that a lot, guys. That's pretty dope. What a trip this reel is. Did I lose one of these? Oh, there it is. Please don't be as tight as the other one. Oh, <laughs> this one literally just came right undone. There was nothing to that one. And this one, there's literally nothing to that one either. All right, so I'm willing to bet that these, okay, these are only designed to keep it attached to the stem. Probably didn't even need to open those. Rob K is probably looking at like, what the hell are you doing, you idiot? <clears throat> how dare you judge my reel? You don't even know how to open it up. And same thing on this side. Okay, let's see. Maybe this. Oh yeah, look at that. This should come out now. Wow. Okay. Whoa. Look at that. That's different. That's really cool, guys. Okay, so this is this is this is what's exciting to me. This is a completely unique design, where the main gear on this side doesn't come out 
of the side that it goes in. So some of the sealed reels out there have kind of like a back door type design where the main gear, the, 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 the teeth, the face of the gear are facing, facing the open side like a Z-Bass, that kind of deal. This side plate, which is pretty heavy gauge aluminum, is what holds the oscillate, oscillation gear. I'm not sure why it's kind of gritty. I don't know if there's something with that or not. I don't know. But if you look here, the, the bearing on the, the base of the pinion, that gets supported in here. There's a lot going on here that you don't necessarily see. Whenever Again, if you're familiar with Van Stahl, don't ever put this back in place unless you're certain that that little post here is in this cam here. Otherwise, you'll have a problem. Guys, that's pretty cool. <laughs> so we just basically wasted our time with these other uh, torques. This is the anti reverse clutch pack. We're assuming that you need to use a, a press to get it out after you remove this cartridge. So we will find out momentarily. We're going to be very easy with it because we don't know if there's anything new and exciting or different. Okay, so you saw that, that pinion support bearing drop out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're sitting there staring at it the entire time. This, this is how goofy we are right now when we're trying to play with these new reels. These are O-rings. Just like that. Grab our little buddy, put him right there. Now it can be safely removed. Can it? Ah. I'm looking at that anti-reverse clutch and I, I hope it's not like a, a low-end clutch. I see a bearing right here at the base. Hold on one second guys, I'm do this off camera. I'm trying to figure out what's preventing it from lifting out all the way. We're gonna go a different route with this. We're not gonna force anything. The screw came out rather easily, so that's a good sign. Okay. That's where we went. Yeah, wow. That's a very, very tight seal. Very, very tight. When you compare this to what you have on a Saragossa, a Slammer, a Spin Fisher, a insert, a reel that's advertising IPX, whatever sealing, they're, this here, the, the shaft under its own weight will generally fall out of it. Not on this. You can hear go, listen. Very, very heavy seal. This is what Van Stahls and Z-Bass reels are known for. The seal at this uh, point um, is one of the more important seals. The only other more important seal in the reel is one right above here to keep water out of the anti-reverse clutch. Now, I, I'm not seeing a way to get in there without having a, a press. I think I, there's just no way for me to tell. Uh, I can't put a pair of pliers on this and then see if this comes off. It's just ruin the clutch that way. But it doesn't look like it's a super impressive clutch at this location. Um, which could be why I was having issues. This, to me, this clutch looks looks like a Lego part. Like what you find on every, any and every spinning reel outside of Shimano. Uh, 
Daiwa Fuego clutch looks remarkably similar to this. Um, I'm assuming that the springs that push the cylinders inward to lock in the back position are the same material that the actual support mechanism of the clutch is, that white plastic, the white nylon. I don't know if they're metal springs or not. Um, doesn't sound like they are. Usually you can kind of hear a little bit of rasp in the, in the anti-reverse clutch if they're metal springed. Um, I'm not hearing that on this. Massive pinion. That's a pretty good sized pinion. Let's take a look at the main gear. We're already in here. Let's go one step further. Good. Good. So if I'm not mistaken, just by looking at this design, this piece that I'm removing now will likely have a kind of a contour to it, almost to nestle in at the base of the... No, it's not. I'm wrong. I'm just talking at my ass. So this piece really only exists, from the looks of it, as a support for the oscillation slider. Stainless steel main gear. You can tell right away because it's so heavy. And then you have a standard ball bearing here. We get that out real quick. Take a look at what comprises the seals. That's how it goes on and out. Heavy duty seal. At all points of entry. Seals like this are nowhere near as free spinning and as loose as what you would find in a Shimano or a, a pen. Not, nowhere near. These are much more restrictive. And for you guys wondering, you can see how the seal rolls inward so when you're replacing the seal this is what you want to see on the inside here very robust very light and uh yeah we don't even need to what was that we don't even need to uh remove these there's some white residue in there hold on a second Not salt, definitely sweet. We don't know what we just put in our mouths. <laughs> I thought it was like salt residue. It tasted like sweet and low. Is, my, is that gonna burn a hole in my tongue? <laughs> uh, we learned something today. Anyway, I think that about covers it. This is the brand new Visser. Stainless steel main gear. Let's take a look at the axle, make sure there's no machining issues which were present on the Saltex that we tore down. Looks good. Adequately lubricated. This is a cool design. And this is where the maintenance port puts you. We'll go over that real quick. So with the gear back in the side plate, pretending there's a bearing there, and this side plate back on, this black screw is a maintenance port. Now on Shimano reels that had that goofy little service port, which was pretty useless, um, 
it put the grease and the lubricant on the back of the gear, not touching anything unless it you use like a like a Shimano grease aerosol can. Would it ever get to the pinion gear? This let's remove. This could be interesting. This could be because of the design one of the absolute best features of this entire reel for like new long-term performance or long-term like new performance so that comes out like so real easy now boom straight down on the main gear that's pretty dope you don't even have to open up this reel to add grease to the main gear. Well done. Well, well done. I wonder how this reel would handle using like a like a motor oil, like a Van Stahl would. Would this, would this clutch be able to handle it? I don't know. I don't know. That we'll have to turn to the manufacturer for because... You ruin the clutch on this, there's no way to really service it, plain and simple. So you get grease up there, and it contaminates it, and it starts failing worse than I'm having issues with. Um, you got an issue. God, this is the best bail in the business right here. Let's take a quick peek at this before we go. My hands are so greasy, I can't even pull it out. Freaking simple. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Ball joint. Piston. Spring loaded. And that goes right into that little pivot point right in here, that little knuckle. Brilliant design. What a what a wonderful design this is. It's the best feel. This is a better feeling uh, bail mechanism than on a Stella. Better than on a Saltiga. The only one that I think feels a little bit better is the Akuma Pixar. <laughs> little thirty nine dollar on Amazon, sixty dollar real MSRP. But this is this is actually a better feel. Well done. That's that's cool. Let's take a look at the line roller bearing. And super beefy bale. The wire on this is just solid metal. Got a metal centering axle here, is it? No, it's not. Okay. Let's see here. How do we get this out? Is it pressed in there? Is it serviceable? It budged a little bit. Oh! Got the bearing! 
Things a little crunchy.